Broadcasting from the Golden Spread of Texas, this is The Fred Hughes Show. With each episode, we introduce to you an inspiring person or message to help you grow and unlock your potential in life. I'm Fred Hughes, professional photographer, pastor, teacher, author, and your show host. Thank you for joining us and welcome to this episode brought to you by the Faithful Partners of Decision Ministry. And welcome to the Fred Hughes Show this evening. My name is Glenn O'Donnell, and I am uh, standing in for Pastor Fred this evening here tonight with my uh, very um, esteemed and dear friend and colleague, uh, Stephen Tao. And uh, we will uh, be sharing a great word with you this evening uh, about God's love. Uh, good afternoon, Stephen. Good afternoon, Glenn. Thanks for the introduction. I don't know about the esteemed part of that, but I'm just going to soak that in tonight. Uh, it's good for you guys to be with us this evening, uh, the listeners and viewers of the Fred Hughes Show. And Glenn and I, I think as we start out tonight, just on a personal note, we've been friends. Glenn was reminding me, I'm in my 50s, so I need to be reminded, uh, but he said we've been friends for 33 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, just a neat journey in our walk with the Lord. At times we were in youth group, and times we were in different churches, and here we are tonight. And so uh, we're just really excited to uh, do this together and just to be here Amen. and just to lift up Jesus and lift right. up the Word of God. You know, I, we know you guys tune in. Uh, you guys are, are hungry for the Lord. You're, you're here tonight to, to hear the Word, and so we're just mm. honored uh, to lift up His name and the Word of God tonight. So... Hey, hey, amen. And, and and one more plug for uh, the friendship that I have with with, with Stephen is that it's so important uh, for um, for us to allow the Lord to bring into our lives friends uh, like Steve and I are for, for each other be, because iron sharpens iron. And I know, uh, Stephen, you know the seasons of my life. Uh, and I so, know some of the seasons of your life. Mm -hmm. and, and God brings friends... Uh, godly friends yeah. uh, who help us stand, who help us continue uh, the walk of faith, because we can't do it by ourselves. Amen. Uh, God, God wired us that way. Mm -hmm. We need people. It keeps us humble, yeah. keeps us accountable. But, but, but on the flip side, it also keeps us needed. And, and it creates value in, in us because we know that someone needs us. So, Steve, appreciate your friendship wow. all these years. You're a mighty man of God, uh, and it is a great honor to share uh, the Word of God tonight. Uh, our goal this evening is to just share the love and hope of Jesus Christ uh, with, with mm -hmm. our audience, uh, regardless of where you're listening from. Mm -hmm. And uh, part two to that goal this evening is is just honestly to have some fun, yeah. to be genuine, uh, and, and to be down to earth. So uh, with, with that said, I, I think we'll just jump into it tonight. So th this is a message that uh, Stephen and I uh, have have been working on uh, for for some time. Uh, and, and, and it really, th this message this evening is about the love of God. Mm -hmm. It's about the power of God. And it's about the goodness and righteousness of God as it has been expressed and demonstrated towards mm -hmm. us in our life, towards mankind. Yeah. But we're going to look at it this evening, Steve, mm -hmm. from, from a little bit different angle than many uh, of the traditional uh, church services we grew up in. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at this from, from the angle of um, where we have been... Uh, before we came to Christ, the condition that we were in, mm -hmm. just how blind we were, yeah. just how literally dead we were. Amen. Um, and in light of that, God in His great love reaches out to us, lays hold of our life, mm -hmm. and then does amazing things. Amen. Amen. No, that's good. That's good. And, and you know, as, as Glenn's saying that, uh, I know, again, our listeners and viewers tonight we all have our own experience with that. When he's talking about God's love or, or talking about the state we were in before we met Christ. Mm -hmm. And it's good just to come back to that. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's so good. And, and I was thinking about this. You, you ever hear someone that they'll, they'll make the comment, I don't forget where I came from. Uh, we always right. admire that about somebody. Maybe they really made it in life. It's like, man, I don't forget. We shouldn't forget where we came from. 
uh, uh, what we had before Jesus. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I think it's good for us to refresh not just our minds, but our spirits with this truth tonight. Uh, and I think it's really going to hopefully encourage you in the Lord uh, with this word. So. Absolutely. Well, let's jump in this evening. I just want to lead out this evening uh, with a verse of Scripture from 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1 that, that says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Mm-hmm. That we should be called children mm-hmm. of God. And I wrote a statement. I, I, I don't want to read my notes tonight, but there's two or three things that I do want to read that I wrote down that I felt like the Lord gave me for this night. And this is one of the statements I want to read to us this evening. This scripture here in 1 John chapter 3 has contained in it much more than what we might see just on the surface. It speaks about the hopeless condition of mankind from which he was unable to remove himself. Mm -hmm. And it speaks of the incredible act of love, sacrifice, and passion of the living God towards his creation to restore fellowship and relationship. And and really, I feel like, Steve, in in that statement that I felt like the Lord gave me, it it really is kind of the balances to both sides of of what we're talking about with emphasis on God's love and God's goodness and God's righteousness. But really, the balance is, well, what spurned on God's love? Mm -hmm. What what was it that caused God to to, uh, jump into action? What moved his heart? What was it that moved his heart? And so uh, you've got a verse there, uh, I I believe, in in John 3 that that you're going to share and kind of uh, uh, reemphasize what it is that we're talking about. Yeah. And and before I do that, I just want to say when he's asking that question, what spurred God on uh, to give us that love, that we should be called children of God. And as we're saying this tonight, I want you to, to remember, Jesus said, when you pray, say, Father. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're referring to a Father. Our faith is based on the family of God. Mm-hmm. And so if you're a parent, uh, if you're a dad, if you're a mom, you know the motivation from your heart for your children. And so I think it's good to just kind of contextualize that tonight so we can relate to it. And, you know, Glenn, talking about us being children of God, and what a, what a blessing that is to us. John 3, 16, obviously, you know, very well-known, famous verse here tonight, for God so loved the world uh, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him would not perish, yeah. but have everlasting life. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's so important, and Glenn, I think you want to say something about perishing, uh, so I'll let him do the, the perishing part. I'll do the good part. Uh, <laughs> but, but, but I want to say this tonight. The motive is so important, guys. Get sure. this tonight. For God, and I love how Jesus didn't say he loved. He said he so loved. Get the emphasis in that language, and then I want to take it a step further. Consider this. He's God. He's perfect. Okay? His motivation wasn't pity. It wasn't disgust. It wasn't, for, it wasn't for, because God was so mad. I'm so tired mm-hmm. of these guys messing up. I guess I'm going to go clean up the mess. No. Mm-hmm. He saw that mess. He saw what we couldn't do, and he said, I love you. That yep. is the mature love, unconditional love of the Father. So that's the motive that we see, I see in that verse tonight. Uh, so, Glenn, take the perishing part. If you I, I, I do, I do want to touch upon yep. upon this word "perish" here in John three sixteen. Mm-hmm. You know, so many times uh, through uh, our, our life, uh, we, we've heard this thousands and thousands of times. This verse, it's on mm-hmm. signs at football games, <laughs> and it's all around yeah. the world. And and for God so so loved. Uh, and and that's oh what well, God loved God loved God loved and and that's great and we need yeah. to know that God loved uh, that's our emphasis really for tonight. But but why did God demonstrate His love? Mm, that's good. Why did He did? Why? Yeah. So that if we would take the step, mm. if mankind would step out and receive that demonstration of love, they would they would not have to perish. That's good. Mm. And. But there, but parish is is I'm speaking to an audience tonight that theologically I I, I don't I don't know where you're at. Mm-hmm. We, we we may have some listeners this evening uh, that don't even know Christ. Don't they haven't received the love of the Father? Yeah. Uh, that they, they they don't know what they're going to perish from. Mm. So uh, I I do want to touch upon upon this is. We're going. We're going to perish, 
uh, because of our sin condition uh, that it was passed on from our mm. friend Adam in, <laughs> in, in the Garden of Eden when, when he stumbled in sin yeah. uh, and, and, and the sin condition has settled into the spirit and life of, of, of all of mankind. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the scripture says that uh, there is none righteous, no, not one. Yeah. Uh, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it is not so much, um, even as I was sharing with Steve the other day, as we were kind of collaborating about this, that, that it's not so much about our sins... Uh, the, the, the particular sins that we're committing mm-hmm. uh, in, in our life, uh, as it is the sin condition yeah. uh, in our spirit, mm-hmm. which has cut us off from the Lord yeah. uh, and um, has, has placed us in, in, a, in a place of death. It's a condition, and from that condition mm-hmm. of death, well, of course, sins are springing forth a- out of that. Yeah. Steve, how's that strike you? No, that's good. And, and I knew where you were going. I almost wanted to high-five you because I, I knew where that was going with the parish part. And, and I want to add to that again, um, again, just this analogy, this picture, if you will, as a parent, if, if you see your kids about to perish, I mean, literally about to hurt themselves to the point of, of dying. And that's what that word just practically means. I mean, mm-hmm. perish means death, destroyed. It's really hard language. Um, and so... Obviously, when we see that, man, we're going to involve ourselves to prevent that kid from perishing right. or, or dying. Um, so, so God seeing this condition, you're talking mm-hmm. about this sin nature, uh, that quite frankly, we were born into. Yes. Um, the Bible says through one man, death came, the first Adam. Yes. Uh, so, so we just were born with this sin nature. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are all, you know, I'm going to do a thing on, on parenting, and, and I want to call it, you know, the cutest little sinners. Because uh, kids are so cute, but they're still little sinners. Yes, <laughs> you're yes. born with sin. They're so adorable, still sin nature. So that's, that's right. our nature. God comes in to prevent us from perishing as a father. Sure, and and th- the reason we're taking a pause here, and we actually have two or three verses here to, to look at that, mm-hmm. b- because it's one thing for us to say this. You know, we need mm-hmm. to bring the word of God to bear on the issue yeah. that that really solidifies what it is that that we're saying. Mm-hmm. But but it but it is this condition of mankind, yeah. the hopeless condition from which they could not extricate themselves yeah. uh, that, that prompted God. The, and I, I love what you said earlier, that he didn't do it out of pity or some sense of obligation or through yeah. his hands up and go, well, if anything <laughs> gets done, I got to be the one to do it. That, that those are those yeah. are false narratives about his character. Yeah. His character was, uh, I, I love mankind. I, I love my creation. Yeah. Um, I had fellowship with them. I had intimate fellowship yeah. with man in the garden, mm-hmm. and and that was stolen um, by a wicked entity called Satan, the devil, yeah. uh, through through uh, his ministry of deception. Mm-hmm. And it was God's heart, and it's always been God's heart mm-hmm. to demonstrate His love, His goodness. His righteousness, mm-hmm. not our righteousness, yeah. in order to redeem His creation, redeem fellowship with mankind, mm-hmm. uh, because because that that's His heart. Amen. That that's who He is. Let me let me uh, read us a, a scripture here that mm-hmm. that really um, complements what it is that we're saying here. Steve is Ephesians uh, two and one uh, that says, uh, and He Christ made you alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. Yeah, yeah. You know, when you're saying that, I, I know most of you, if you're familiar with Lazarus, the story of Lazarus, mm-hmm. and you said, you know, you, you, were, you were dead and now made you alive. Think of that spiritually. It's literally in that same condition, just, you know, in the natural, just hopeless. Mary and Martha, you know, Lazarus, and, and yeah. Jesus wept. He, he loved him. Uh, and he comes and brings life to a totally dead corpse. Fourth day, starting to stink, decaying. Yeah. And Glenn, when you say that, the picture just comes to my mind. It's like, man, we were that dead. We were. Just totally nothing going on, and then Christ made us alive. Absolutely. You know? Be- because, it is, because our life is not just this physical body. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who we are is not just our, our mind, our emotions, mm-hmm. uh, our will, but, but we're spirit beings. Yeah. In, in fact, I, I, 
I know one uh, uh, pastor who said it this way, that, that we are a spirit. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a soul and we live in a body, but we are a spirit. Mm-hmm. That's really who we are. Yeah. And in, in the Garden of Eden, that, that's, that's what perished. That's yeah. what was slain. That's what was put to death. That's why that fellowship could not continue anymore in the garden between uh, mankind and God, because that intimate spirit uh, fellowship was was cut off. Now, did it affect mankind's bodies? A- absolutely. Uh, much shorter lifespans. Sickness, disease, has it affected uh, the part of us that is a mind, a will, an emotion? Uh, yes. Anxiety, depression, despondency, mm-hmm. hopeless, all these things rack our minds. Yeah. But it really is that spirit man yeah. that died, and because of, of that condition, mm-hmm. we are forever hopeless yeah. to draw our own selves out of that condition. Yeah. Now... No, again, I just, you know, that hopelessness, that state of being dead, it, and it's interesting when you say the Spirit, uh, you know, when our Spirit comes alive through Christ, think about Jesus, you know, with the woman at the well, and He said, those who worship God, worship Him in spirit mm-hmm. and in truth. To relate to God, God is Spirit. So it's necessary for us to be a born, a, born again and come alive in the Spirit, and that was the original design of man. Now, I would add to that Ezekiel 36, and I say this mm-hmm. a lot, how he says God kind of, I call it re-engineered, he rewired his creation, said, yes. I'm going to say something, the devil messed it up. Now I'm going to give you a new heart, a heart of flesh, a new spirit, and I'm going to put my spirit mm-hmm. in you. I'm mm-hmm. going to give you my power now to be uh, who I've called you to be. So we are part of that. I just want to encourage that tonight. You know, we have the Holy Spirit. If you've asked Jesus into your your heart, you've chosen to follow Christ, you've made mm-hmm. him Lord and Savior, Yes, uh, we have the Holy Spirit to empower. So it's even a, a greater level of intimacy and fellowship that we have now with the Father. Absolutely. So, yeah. It, uh, by, by far, the Scripture says that, that the new covenant was based on uh, better promises. Yes. It, it's cut in a better blood. Yes. Uh, it, it's Amen. based on better promises. It, it is, in fact, Paul says the old covenant mm-hmm. uh, it is a glory that's fading a, a away, and the mm-hmm. new covenant bears a glory that, um, that, that, that cannot be contained. Yeah. And, and that is the hope, and that is the life, and that is the truth that we're sharing here tonight yeah. as we kind of take steps through this message uh, let's let's share two more scriptures, Steve, okay. before, before we kind of sh- change gears a little bit uh, and get to the very heart of what it is that we're talking about. That 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 I think, if people can uh, can get the revelation of in their spirit, in their heart, by the Holy Ghost, mm-hmm. can can revolutionize not just lives, but I think revolutionize the the way uh, that church uh, happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, that church is done, uh, that Christianity happens in the mm-hmm. earth, because this is a big deal. And, and, and I'm not saying tonight, oh, hey, I've got some revolutionary that no one's ever come. I'm not saying that. But yeah. what I'm saying is, this is, it's good. Mm-hmm. And you, and you want to hang on and listen. Amen. Amen. Okay, a quick couple of scriptures here. Uh, as we close about the condition of mankind, uh, Colossians 2, 13, again, reiterates Mm-hmm. Uh, what we already affirmed, uh, uh, Paul says uh, here, and you being dead in trespasses, which we already affirmed, mm-hmm. yeah. that we're dead. We're, we're not weak in trespasses. Yeah. We're, we're not slumbering in trespasses. Yeah. Uh, we are not comatose <laughs> in trespasses. We were dead yeah. in trespasses, which means absolutely cut off from God without God, yeah. hopeless, yeah. Uh, and as dead as, as a thing can be dead. And you, if you don't believe me? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm glad you asked that question. So my next scripture uh, here is Ephesians 2 and 13, which was actually a very great discourse, but I, shut it, I cut it down just to these few words where Paul to the church in Ephesus said to them that you, having no hope, and without God in the world. Mm -hmm. Two things. How much hope? No hope. And without who? Without God. Why? Mm -hmm. Because we were steeped in sin, 
dead in sin because that was our fault? No, it wasn't our fault. We were born that way. Yeah. We can thank Adam for that when we get to heaven. We were born that way. It's our, like I said, it's our condition. It was the condition, and out of that sprung many types of sins and, and deadly habits in our life. Those were fruits of the root of our dead condition, but we were without hope and we were without God in the world. Yeah, you know, and it's funny, in our human nature, and you think about people that, uh, especially in the times we're living in, and they mock God, they reject God, they rebel against God, and we have this hopelessness in us. I mean, sometimes you'll hear people say you have this God-sized hole in you that God can fill, and however you want to say it. But the bottom line is, without God, our Creator, and the fellowship we were designed to have with Him, we're hopeless. But the world tries to fill that with so many ways. They try to redeem that hopeless state uh, by filling it with success or, or sinful behavior or whatever the thing is that makes them feel better about their condition. Mm -hmm. Listen... You can't feel better about death. Yeah, Death, there's nothing to it. And, and that's the thing we have to acknowledge mm -hmm. tonight. You can only dress up death so much. Sure. <laughs> you can only say, hey, this is, and it's not. And you know that. You know, if you've come to know the Lord, you know before him that hopeless state. Mm -hmm. You know that you were dead. And yeah, you were putting on a smile and I'm, I'm a, no, you're not. No, you're not. And, and none of us were. So that hopeless state, that is the true condition that anyone apart from God, mm -hmm. you know that. But consequently, we know the opposite of that too. Sure, and I'm 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 questioning if I want to make this comment now. Uh, I, I I'm going to tease with this comment it, uh, it, to the content that's shortly to come. Is is that yes, w we were dead in sin, mm -hmm. and and yes, there were all kinds of evils about mm -hmm. our life, but there, there we have not been condemned, Steve. Mm -hmm. Because of uh, the, our condition of, of, of sin, being dead in trespasses or the evils of our, we haven't been condemned because of that. Yeah. We have, we have not. Yeah. Um, condemnation comes only be, for for one reason, and and it's it's actually from a verse that uh, I, I placed back in the body here uh, that I'm going to pull out at this time because it, it seems like this is the perfect time for it. Um, thank you, Lord. Uh, from John 3 and 19. Mm -hmm. Here's the camera. Uh, from John 3 and 19, and Jesus is speaking here, and he says, and this is the condemnation or the reason that we would perish. Mm -hmm. Okay, or the reason that we would be condemned. Mm -hmm. This is the condemnation that the light, Christ, has come into the world, but men loved darkness rather than than light. And and and, and the, the amazing thing is, is that even in our condition, even with all the sins that we were struggling with in, in, our, in our life, and I'm going to give a testimony here in, in, uh, after I finish and, and you speak, I'm going to give a short testimony, but it was not God's heart to condemn us because we were dead in trespasses. Mm -hmm. It was not his heart mm -hmm. because we had all sorts of evils about our life before we came to Christ. It was not his heart. What does the scripture say? That God would have none to perish, but all come to repentance and come to life. That's his heart. And I think it is so incredible that that's who he is. Yeah, well, and you're talking about that condemnation. It says the light came in the world, but men love darkness lest their deeds be exposed. Mm -hmm. And there again, that's our nature. Remember Adam and Eve, what happened when God came on the scene? They covered up, okay? Mm -hmm. we, we want to cover up and we want to hide that's in good. the dark. And God wants to bring us to the light, back to fellowship with him. And so, you know, as you're saying that, it's just making me think about that. You know, we are condemned because of the choice. Our nature chooses darkness, but God can come in, and this is where we're going tonight, mm -hmm. and he can transform us with his love and it makes us want to come back to the Father uh, and being reinstated in His light. That, that's amazing. God wants us to come to the light. You just said He mm -hmm. wants us to come to the light. Yeah. That, that is incredible because, because so often 
uh, we have an enemy, the mm. the devil, mm. who who wants to deceive our mind yeah. into thinking, well, don't go into the light, you'll be exposed. Just what you were you were mm -hmm. um, affirming there, yeah. well, well, you'll be exposed. Yeah. Uh, your 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 deeds will be exposed. Your past will be exposed. Mm -hmm. Your secrets will be exposed. All the skeletons in your closet are going to come out, and everyone's going to know who you are. But listen, God knows who we are. Yeah, God knows all that stuff. And and, and again. I am appealing to his amazing character. Mm -hmm. I could shout this from the rooftops. God knows who we are. Yeah. He still wants to bring us into the light. Yeah. Knowing who we are, knowing that we'll be exposed, knowing all that. It's his, it is his desire to strip all that junk off of us. The scripture says, he who, in, he who is in Christ is a new creation. Mm -hmm. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Mm -hmm. God wants us to take that step of faith into the light in Christ, mm -hmm. regardless of what our past is, regardless of what the evils are, regardless of the skeletons in the closet. But but I want but I, I, I want to warn us, and, and I think you have something you want to share about this, is that there is an enemy in the world who is trying to blind the minds, both of Christians, but especially of of those who don't know Christ, that, oh, don't do that. That that That's certainly the thing you don't want to do. Yeah. Well, and as you're saying that too, by the way, I believe it's in Hebrews, it says that we are naked before him, that all things are laid bare before him. So the truth is the, the state of Adam and Eve, I mean, God sees through all of that anyhow. His light permeates all darkness. Um, but you know, Glenn, as you're, as you're saying that, and, and we've really, we started off talking about God's love and we've really established, you know, the condition, this, this state that we were in before Christ. Uh, but I want to make a distinction tonight because as mm -hmm. we're moving forward sure. and we're talking about the love of God, I want us to really think about a, dis, a distinguishing between God's love and the world's love. Mm -hmm. and, and the truth is we're living in a time where those two have really mingled, okay? God's love doesn't mean he alters the truth. And, and you guys, we're familiar with these words nowadays, tolerance, uh, all these words that basically want to take God and yeah. take extract truth from him, from sure. his character, and just make it love, okay? Sure. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13 that love rejoices in the what? truth. Yes. Okay. So love rejoices in truth. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they are put together. And, you know, we were taught, Glenn, growing up, and, and you guys know where the verse in First John, it says that God is love. Mm -hmm. Okay. We, we live in a time where we say love is God. Sure. And we've taken something, and it's it's not even the love that God talks about, which is an unconditional love. Sure. It's a love-based feeling, and we've made a deity out of an emotion. Sure. And we've said, love is now God. Well, I want to very clearly affirm to you tonight, God is love, mm. but His truth is at the center of that. Sure. And His character doesn't alter. It doesn't tolerate choices outside of His truth. His love will actually lead us and empower us to walk in His truth. Sure. You know? Sure. And, and I, you shared that with me before and even sharing it tonight. Mm -hmm. I think that is so relevant to the body of Christ in, in this age. But uh, as you were talking about that, the truth is is a big part of mm -hmm. of God's God's love. You shared that with me before, and, and mm -hmm. it's powerful to me again. Uh, but remember the the scripture that we just um, that we just uh, touched upon that God would have none perish. Yeah. Right. We we saw that. Yeah. Uh, 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 word before perish. He doesn't want anyone to perish. Mm -hmm. But that all would come to repentance. repentance. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if God is just a God of love and not a God of truth, w w where is repentance in anything? Yeah, yeah. So, so there is a repentance. So, so because of truth, b because God is a God of love, but a God of truth as well. Th there is in what we're talking about, and we'll see this that there is going to be a, a changing of our mind, mm -hmm. a, a a confessing to God that I need to turn my life around, and I I need to begin to get in line with His Word, mm -hmm. uh, with His heart, uh, with what He's saying about my life what the scriptures have to say about our life. So I, I, I love that you wanted this to be part of this message because to the body of Christ and, and, mm -hmm. and certainly to those who don't know the Lord, mm -hmm. this is an incredibly foundational 
uh, incredibly pertinent and important, um, inf- not, I don't want to call it information, um, truth, truth it, it, that, that we need to, to have. Well, and, and I want to say this too, and I'm going to go back to the parent analogy when you talked about perishing, um, God would, that none would perish. It's the truth that keeps us from perishing. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I was telling Glenn, we were talking about this earlier today, and I said, you know, as a parent, you love your kids, but your love doesn't allow them to go drink the Drano. Okay. Sure. You, you don't continue to just love them. And honey, if that's what you want here, would you, yeah. okay, you're going to stop them from doing something that hurts them. And it's the truth that we know, not mm-hmm. the truth, the truth that we know that will set us free. Sure. And that word no means to experience. So tonight, these truths we're talking about, it's important to remember that we actually, you know, take them in our heart, choose to walk them out and experience it. And walking in that truth sets us free. We walk in the love of God, and then we're not positioning ourselves to perish, not just eternally perish, guys. There are people perishing every day. Sure. Their lives, this thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Okay, so there are people perishing. Marriages are perishing. Yes. Kids are, parent- are perishing. Uh, people's personal lives, men are falling, mm-hmm. and women, in all different lifestyles, contrary to God's word. So there's yeah. perishing going on sure. beyond eternal perishing, and God's saying, hey, I've got a truth. That when you come and experience my love and yield to that truth, it's going to set you free. And as that parent, as that father, he's keeping us from perishing. Sure. Yeah. And and even there again, it reminded me of the uh, scripture that, that we were sharing earlier today when Jesus turned around to part of the multitude that had been following him and his mm-hmm. disciples, and and they kept calling out uh, to him, Lord, Lord, uh, all yeah. the time, uh, yeah. because it was socially kind of the thing to do. Uh, dur- during the years of Jesus' ministry is to kind of be part of the crowd that kind of went around with the Jesus crew, and, mm-hmm. and they would call out, Lord, Lord, and finally he couldn't take it anymore, and he turned around to them, and he said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and and do not do what I say? Yeah. And it, 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 that reminded me of the scripture that says that the law came through Moses, which is a ministry of having to perform for God, mm-hmm. uh, and, and that, God put that to death through the ministry, through the life and death and resurrection of Christ, mm-hmm. but that grace and truth, truth yeah. came through Jesus, yeah. and, and and we need grace, and grace is amazing, and grace has revolutionized uh, my life. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, we cannot veer off that truth that that says that um, that Jesus is not just Savior; He's also Lord. Yeah. He's yeah. Lord of our life, and, and, and in Him being Lord, um, I know we're rabbit trailing just a little bit, but I like it. In, in being Lord, that means, God, I recognize you as my authority. Yeah. I yeah. recognize your word to me as authority, yeah. and I'm going to give it place in my life to the extent that I'm going to live my life according to the authority of what it is that I hear you saying to me from your word. Yeah. Well, and we do that, and, I, and I'll just speak personally Glenn was going to his, share his testimony. I'll just jump. I'll just go jump ahead it. of me. I'll yeah, do mine. Do but but the simplicity of, of it is this: you know, I grew up in church, uh, was raised in church my whole life. My family, you know, my parents were really good about getting us in there. So very familiar with uh, you know the teaching and preaching of God's word and, and being around that. But but I was just fake. Uh, you know, I was living a double life, and all that to say, without a lot of details, when I came to repentance, Glenn. It was this love, just like the prodigal son that I received, that I never, ex- I didn't see that coming. Mm-hmm. And when that captures your heart, that's what brings about the real change. And sure. so, so these things we're talking about, guys, what we started off with here tonight, this love we're talking about, this love of God, that God so loved us, um, Satan wants to keep us from that. And, mm-hmm. and I really, Glenn, I want to delve into that tonight, and, and I want you to sure. kind of jump in with me as I do this. Sure. But, but we've, we've really... Tonight, we've established God's love. We've established our condition and our need for God's love. I want to expose Satan, okay? And I love to do this. I love to come, and mm-hmm. when we... Because here's the thing about truth, guys, and, and you know, Bible talks about this, about the birds that come. That's Satan, okay? The Word of God is sown mm-hmm. in Satan. So I don't want Satan getting this word from you tonight. I want sure. to expose him. The Bible says we're not ignorant of his schemes, okay? Mm-hmm. It's like, Glenn, and you know, we played some sports... It'd be great if you had the other team's playbook, and you're like, man, I can tell you exactly what they're going to do. Absolutely. We, we want to expose the playbook of Satan tonight Let's as do. it pertains to God's love. Let's do. And so with that being said, uh, you know, I want to say this. You know, you know, Satan's plan is to keep us from God's love. Why does he want to keep us from God's love? And here's the simple truth. When we encounter 
that love, we become like Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay, it enables us. Okay, sure. First uh, John four seventeen it says, "In this world, we are like Jesus." Now, the context of that is the love of God. Okay, so that love mm -hmm. it empowers us. We don't have a spirit of fear, but what? Power, yeah. love, and yeah. a sound mind. Yeah. Listen to that love right there with power and a sound mind. Love is powerful. Yes. And this is what Satan knows, okay? Yes. So he wants to keep us because he knows that this happens. We'll be like uh, Jesus. You know, uh, years ago, we had played at the church in a, a flag football tournament. And uh, all, you know, how Christian sports are, you know, there's all sorts of things going on that aren't Christian. Uh, and so I had a buddy of mine, and we were playing this other team, <laughs> and things got heated between these two guys, and it was rough. And uh, we thought they were going to fight right there, and, and they it dissipated. It was fine. Well, we were playing on a regular basis, and we'd practice at a local football field here. And I remember we're out there with all our buddies, we're all there. And this guy that my friend had gotten into shows up with all his buddies, and we're just sitting there, Glenn. And, and you know, Glenn, we used to do all this stuff. And I'm like, oh man, this is this is not. And we're all prepared for whatever. This guy walks up, just stone look on his face with his buddies, comes right up to my friend that they had had this contention with, and gave him a hug. And he said, I want you to forgive me. Man, it just melted every sure. guy there. That love, and what we did know is he had had an encounter with the love of God. It changed him, and man, I'm telling you, it changed us. Sure. He wanted, went on to be a youth pastor. I've seen him recently. Great man of God. Uh, but that's what, see, Satan knows. Mm -hmm. If you get not, you can get truth all day, but it's it, you need both. Sure. You need this love to change your heart. Yes. Uh, Glenn, you want to comment on that? Well, I, I just love what you're saying there. And, and, and the, the, the problem with, with just truth Truth without love mm -hmm. or truth without love and grace That's good. Uh, it gets us off in one ditch. Uh, I, I know one pastor uh, during our uh, Connect group in the last semester, mm -hmm. uh, he kept talking about what I'm talking about. I, I think his name was Fred Hughes. <laughs> oh, uh, great guy. But um, Boy, you, you get, you get, legend, you get truth, truth, <laughs> truth, and you get off the road mm. into one ditch in the tall yeah. weeds over there. That's good. And that's not where God wants us. Yeah. But when you get just love, 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 which mm. you, you've already alluded to, yeah. uh, without truth to balance out our lifestyle, uh, we get off the road into the other ditch, into the tall weeds, and we get in trouble over there. Yeah. And, and so it's very important that we get a balance of, of the love of God and the truth of God and blend those together. Yeah. And this person called the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. whom God will give us as we receive Jesus, is very good at helping us accomplish that very goal. Well, I, on that note, you know, I used to always say that it's, it's you know, truth and love is like this. The love is the warmth of a fire when you're out in the cold that draws you in. The fire is what burns all that sin. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Jesus will baptize you with fire and the Holy Spirit. Yes. Okay? He wants to come in and cleanse us. And we talk about re being refined through as through fire. So this is that 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 love is like, man, it's cold. I, I, won't, I want to get the warmth of God. And you get in and God's like, good, now I'm going to deal with this. But but it's that love that keeps us there. Yes. It's that love that will make you walk into that fire yes. and say, God, cleanse me and purify me. Yeah. Um, I, I want to say this. Let, let me uh -huh. let me just coattail on what you just said. Just to, it just mm -hmm. popped in my spirit. Remember when when P, uh, Jesus was telling his disciples that he was going to go to Jerusalem, that that mm -hmm. he would be betrayed by the by the the teachers of the law and the Pharisees, and that that he would be arrested, mm -hmm. beaten, and they would be crucified, and he would die. Yeah. And and Mister Clever uh, oh, Peter uh, <laughs> Simon Bar Jonah. Yeah. Uh, he had another plan, and he told Jesus, "Let it not be so, Lord." Mm -hmm. This shall not happen to you like this. What did Jesus do? Well, he turned right around me and he shared truth. That's good. With Peter. Yeah. Satan, get behind me. I know that's pretty harsh, but but Peter understood that as Peter, you are 180 degrees from where the plan of God is lined up for my life. Yeah. You don't have the things in mind that God has in mind, but the things, things that, that man, man has in yeah. mind. So Jesus, w without a hesitation, turned around, delivered a whole mouthful of truth to Peter. Yeah. But, but then what did he do? 
come on, Peter, let's get going. Mm -hmm. We got stuff to do. You're still with me. Yeah. Yeah. Here's truth, but you're still my bro. Let's go. Yeah. Truth and love. And that's a healthy relationship. And again, parents, you know this. Uh, if, if you're married, I hope you know that too. You need truth and love in your marriage too. But but we have to walk in those two dynamics. Um, the, here's here's another plan of Satan. He wants to make it dependent on us. Okay. He wants it dependent on you. And and here's what he knows. If it's focused on us, we're going to know, I don't deserve God's love. Sure. See, we want to feel like we qualify for yes. God's love. And Satan knows if I can get focused on you, you're going to know you're not good enough. Uh, remember, it says, for God so loved the world. And if you're in the world, I just want to say, you're loved. You're sure. loved. But, but here's the thing. You know, it's been, I don't know, a year or so ago. I think I maybe I was driving and got mad. I don't know what, but I was really convicted about something and I just repented and said, Lord, you know, I'm, I'm sorry I did that. And, and I remember in my prayer saying, Lord, I don't deserve that. And I remember immediately the Lord said, you never did. Ouch. And, and, I, and I want to tell you something. I, you'll never deserve God's love based on your merit. And we know yeah. that. And Glenn, you established that earlier. Yeah. And Satan knows that. So if he can park you right there, yeah. what's, deserved, what's based on you, man, you're never going to get there. So I love what a, a teacher of mine early on in, in just in church told me. He said, it's so wise often to agree with your adversary. When the devil comes up and tell you how bad you are, as mm -hmm. we were saying earlier about our condition, just agree with him and say, yeah, I know it. But Jesus has made me righteous. Sure. There's a love I don't deserve that I can gain through Christ. Yes. Um, so Romans 8, 35, 39, not going to read it, but... I mean, we can, but very familiar passage. What nothing can separate us from? Yes, the love of God. Okay. Yes. So there's a difference between what's available and what we experience. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is another thing Satan knows. Uh, you know, we're surrounded by God's love. We're surrounded by the presence of God. Okay. Yeah. You know, Glenn and I were talking. We're surrounded by air, but we choose to breathe it in. Sure. And I remember I was in a theology class and I asked my professor. I said, "Nothing can separate us from God's love, but we have a choice, and the enemy can keep us." from getting to that place where we can breathe in God's love. Yes. And I want you to think about that tonight as we're talking about this. I want mm -hmm. you to breathe this in by faith and say, I, yeah. I don't deserve this. God, you've given it to me. I want to breathe it in. So I want to encourage you tonight as we're moving through this just to just by faith to reach out and receive God's love. Yeah. On the on this uh, uh, I know we're we're kind of wanting to run through this a little bit here, but this is this is good. And you know, we've got a little bit of time here. Remember mm -hmm. the woman Remember the harlot that that Jesus ministered to, and then she shows up later, mm -hmm. and she is uh, came into the meeting that that he was having, is having lunch with the Pharisee in his mm -hmm. house, yeah. and, and so she shows up and she's crying on his feet, mm -hmm. weeping. She's dr drying his feet with her hair. She's kissing his feet. Mm -hmm. That was against the law. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she that was literally against the law for her to be there doing that. But something transformed her life in such a way that she did the unthinkable. That's why the Pharisee was like, oh my gosh, if this man were really a prophet or a man of God, he yeah. would know who this woman is and he would know that it's against the law and she shouldn't be in here doing this. But what had happened to her? Yeah. God loved her in a way that she knew she did not qualify for. Yeah. And what did Jesus say? To whom much been forgiven. See, yeah. and that's the thing. Yes. He asked them that question. He asked that story. Yeah. And so she had been forgiven much, Yeah. so she loved much. So she loved much. Yeah. That's and, awesome. and, you know, I want to say, too, when you say that, and that's such a good story, And but you know what? Maybe you come from kind of a Christian background. You think, well, how can I love more, but I don't feel like I need to be forgiven? I think, again, going back, that it's it's real good. Remember where we came from. And I think you did such a good job, Glenn, of talking about that. Remember our original state and our need. Yeah. And so we can all come, just like she did, and love God at a deeper level when we get this realization sure. of how much we've been forgiven. You know, if we're forgiven much, we love sure. much. Yes. So, yeah. Um, and, and, and Satan, you know, you mentioned this first earlier, the God of this world in 2 Corinthians 4, 4 said, has blinded the minds of unbelievers. Sure. Okay? So, so Satan wants to keep us from seeing God's goodness, okay? Um, it's like fake news. Oh, sorry, I dropped that real quick there. <laughs> <laughs> I want to keep you from seeing the truth. But, um, but, but, but for believers, he wants us to doubt it, okay? And, and here's an easy example, Glenn. Uh, how many of you out there have had trials, hardships? And, you know, as we go through those seasons of life, the Bible says, it talks very clearly about trials, it says to rejoice. You know, all these things were actually yeah. encouraged during these hardships. Um, 
And when you're going through that, I remember my daughter was having surgery and we were going through a really hard time with her sickness and mm -hmm. finances and all that stuff. What does the devil speak to you during those times? Mm -hmm. well, well, God doesn't love you. Sure. You know, you he'll get you to doubt God's love. Yeah. And so that's a tactic of Satan that we need to be aware of and we need to expose it because it's not God's plan. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in, in fact, so, sometimes the, the devil uh, is 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 not just wanting us to um, reject uh, out of hand uh, God and, and all that he is and all his truth is mm -hmm. and just turn our back and, and, and completely reject God. Yeah. That's not necessarily yep. his plan. But if he can get us yeah. to just doubt God's love, yeah. to doubt his good heart towards us, yeah. th then that gets us to doubt whether or not we should approach God, yeah. that we should uh, come to God in prayer, that we should ask for anything. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it gets us to begin to take steps backwards in our relationship to him. The intimacy is, is gone. Yeah. Um, the the intimacy is gone, uh, and and that's the whole crux of the matter. There is uh, God wants that intimate, uh, loving relationship with us. Uh, but if we doubt His love and doubt His goodness, that the the devil has uh, done his job. Yeah. No. And 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 another thing, and just to reiterate what we talked about earlier was you know seeing our need for God. Satan wants to keep you from seeing. Our need, and and you know, Jesus said in Matthew five three, "Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven." And that picture in the Greek is like a beggar uh, that just realizes how bankrupt he is. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, realizing that is really an open door uh, for us to to uh, receive God's love. Um, you know, I want to say, and this is one of the last things here along this thing we're exposing Satan uh, and how he tries to keep us from God's love. But you know, he wants to keep us. From being secure, and this ties in. I want to get to this because you were kind of alluding to this. Mm -hmm. um, Psalms thirteen five says, "But I will trust in your unfailing." And I love how many times the Bible talks about God's love being unfailing. Yeah. It does not fail. Sure. But I will trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. Here's the thing, guys. The number one need of a woman is security. Mm. So what does it say for husbands to do? What are you supposed to do for your wife? Love your wives. Love brings security to the relationship. So Satan knows the absence of love from mm -hmm. God in our relationship sure. gets us to doubt it. Sure. And I want to tell you something with my kids. I'm not saying I was a perfect parent, but they didn't walk around doubting, man, am, am I his child today? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'll make it today. Maybe I'll... Sure. Let me tell you, the status of them being my child never changed. My love for them never changed. Yes. And if Satan can get you to doubt if you're a child of God or if God loves you, man, you're insecure all the time. And you're so crippled. You're so, uh, you know, hindered from walking in the power and just the joy. Sure. You know, I, I yes. look back as we were talking about this. What does the Bible say? Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Yes. Man, guys, think about that. Think about that first love that Jesus calls us back to. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a love that, man, when you get that, I mean, why can't we live in that? We encourage, we're part of a yeah. marriage ministry. We encourage, you know, in your marriage, make sure you date, keep that love alive. Hey, yeah. how about we keep love with God alive? Sure. Uh, how about we refresh that relationship by just simply coming in and acknowledge these truths and receiving God's love? Absolutely. And 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 I want to, uh, again, coattail off how you were speaking there. Uh, about the faithfulness of God's love and the constancy of God's love. Remember, Jesus told uh, the parable about uh, the prodigal son uh, who uh, took his part of the inheritance, and, and most of us know the story. He, he went out and he squandered that inheritance, uh, the Scripture says, on riotous living. Mm -hmm. uh, use your imagination. Uh, the, the nature of mankind has not changed over the last 2,000 years, yeah. so you probably know what he did with his money. And that he ended up in this place where he, he, he was um, uh, w working for, for daily food, it ends up living in, in the pig pens with the pigs and eating the pods that the pigs were eating comes to his mind, goes, I'm going to go to, to my father's house. Mm -hmm. Even his servants have enough to eat and to spare and a place to stay. And when he, re when he got to his father's house, mm -hmm. here's where, what I'm shooting for. When he got to his father's house, mm -hmm. what happened? He got a good talking to. No. Mm -hmm. uh, he got scolded. No. 
that uh, the, the father shut the door and had his guards escort his son away because he wanted nothing to do with him. Yeah. No. Yeah. The son was, was in, he was not just embraced, he was aggressively embraced. In fact, the, the story that Jesus told about what the father did was in that day something that a father with his dignity intact would not do. Mm-hmm. What the father did in, in running from the porch out to meet his son afar mm-hmm. was a father who desperately loved his son mm-hmm. and wanted to desperately welcome him back. Yeah. And, and we see through all the time, we don't know how long the son was gone, mm-hmm. uh, but the dad knew surely all that the son had, had done and how he was living, but the love of the father mm-hmm. never waned it, it never drained off. It never got stale to the extent that when he saw his son from afar off, he took off running to go meet him. Yeah. That's, that is the picture of the father's love. Yeah. And, and just to reiterate a point we made earlier, how did the prodigal son come back? He's like, hey, dad, I'm here. You owe me everything. I want some more money. That wasn't enough. I need more. I want you know, my older brother give me his. In- right. No, what did he do? He came back spiritually bankrupt like that beggar. And God says a broken and contrived spirit. See, yes. that's what when we come to, man, God says, I'll pour it all out on you. Okay, Absolutely. Closing out this portion here, uh, just practically speaking, there's a lot more we could say, but a couple of just things I feel like the Holy Spirit highlighted to me to, to share with you about why we don't experience this. If you're not experiencing God's love tonight, I talked about how Satan tries to keep us, but a couple of practical things um, you know, one, we can be unaware, and I think we've hopefully helped you in that process. Sure. Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed. That's mm-hmm. also synonymous with perish mm-hmm. for lack of knowledge. Sure. Okay. So, so the truth of God's word on the subject is something we need to be reminded and refreshed in tonight. Um, but we don't know what's available. That's another thing. We just simply don't know the depth. The Bible talks about the, the depth of God's love. Sure. And, and, you know, I was going to illustrate this. We have some family members years ago on my wife's side that, you know, like all families, you have some rich, you have some poor, people in between. And so they were all going to take a family trip to Six Flags. And this family, uh, they were really struggling to get the money to go, but they did it. And so they're all going as a family. They're so mm-hmm. excited, man, we got to go. And everybody's going to Six Flags. And they all got in the park, and here they go. And this particular uh, this uh, aunt and uncle of, of my wife's, they noticed as the day progressed, that they, they they weren't writing anything. And they thought, well, maybe they're scared. They didn't know why they weren't writing. And, you know, they, they just, everyone went throughout the day, enjoyed their time there, wrote everything. And as the evening drew near and they had dinner, they asked them and said, well, why didn't you write anything? And they said, well, we couldn't afford to pay for the rides. We could just afford to get in the park. Well, if you've been to Six Flags or park like that, when you pay the admission, you get to do everything. Yes. See, God says, remember, you may eat freely of all the trees, just not this one. Yeah. Okay, God's love has so much depth to it. Mm-hmm. Guys, we don't know what's even available. And sure. like that family member, we're not experiencing it. And God's saying tonight, I want you to experience. I don't want you to just hear this teaching. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I want you to experience yes. my love tonight. Yes. So they don't experience it. And then, and then lastly, and Glenn, I'll let you close this out. Okay. We don't often know the value of it. Sure. Hey, this is key. You know, I've got a granddaughter that's two, and every time I'm on here, I like to talk about her if I get a chance. So uh, my granddaughter, uh, little Lainey, she's two. And if I were to approach her tonight and say, Lainey, Papa is going to pay for your college tuition. Well, now, she might smile. She might not even respond to me. She doesn't even know what that means, okay? She gets a little older. She might appreciate it. Mm -hmm. When she's 18 and she sees the price of college, and if mom and dad said, we're not going to pay for it, and she feels the weight of that, mm-hmm. and she sees, wow, this is really valuable. Mm-hmm. See, what has happened, though, from the 2-year-old to the 18-year-old, she's matured. Sure. Guys, listen, maturity helps us see the value mm-hmm. of the principles of God and the truth yes. of God's Word. So tonight, we want to see, through maturity in Christ and mm-hmm. what we see in His Word, the value of this. Yes. And we can't put a price tag on it. There's nothing more valuable than God's love that draws us back to Him. Sure. Yes. 
Thank you, Steve. That's awesome. Um, uh, awesome segment there. And um, like you said, man, we could probably sit here for several hours. And I think we will. Fred, is that okay? We're just going to. Uh, how long can this show go? Two. Just kidding. Uh, well, let's let's begin to land the plane a little bit here. Yeah. Uh, we're we're going to finish up here with a scripture that I've been saving all night long. Uh, th- this is really the chord uh, that I have wanted to pluck uh, on the instrument all night long. Uh, and it, it is a scripture out of Romans 5 and 6. In fact, it's the very verse that kind of came in live in me mm-hmm. that really inspired this message. So let's just, let me, let me read this verse to us tonight, uh, and then we will uh, just discuss just for a moment. Uh, Romans 5 and 6 says, For when we were without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Mm-hmm. I'm not done. I'm just pausing. I want to let you, I'm going to let you just listen to that, what that just said. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. It continues, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man would someone even dare to die. But God demonstrates his love towards us, Mm -hmm. as we shared earlier in in this Mm -hmm. message, Mm -hmm. in that while we were still sinners or dead in sin, Christ died for us. And there's so much in here. There's so much said in, in, in this verse that is so amazing, but but this set of verses here declares the character of our father Mm -hmm. so well. It tells his story so well by itself that when we were ungodly, Steve, Mm -hmm. when, when we, when I, I, I used to have some horrible sin addictions in, in my life before I came to Christ, horrible sin addictions, Mm -hmm. Christ knew that I would live that lifestyle, but he died for me. While I was ungodly, the heart of God was for me. While I was ungodly, uh, the heart of God would not turn away from me. While I was ungodly, the heart of God and the love of God would not fail for me. While I was yet a sinner committing all of those horrible sins, while I was dead in my sins and trespasses and my spirit cut off from him, God would not turn away from me. When I was dead and unable to help myself, God would not turn away from me. When I was dead and could not speak, could not see, could not hear, could not speak for myself, could not cry out for help. Mm -hmm. This is the good stuff, folks. I didn't even know that I needed a God. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I needed a Savior. I didn't know that I needed to be born again. I, I didn't know any of that. Yeah. God did not turn away from me. God did not turn his love from me. Mm-hmm. And this truth about who he is, Steve, our salvation, our, our relationship with Jesus has nothing to do with us other than the fact that we just received it by faith. Mm-hmm. Our, our salvation, our being born again, our being a child of God, it's all about God. Mm-hmm. It was his idea. Yeah. It was hatched in his head mm-hmm. to come for us the way that he has. It was his heart. It was his passion. Mm-hmm. And, and it just, if you can get to this truth, of, not about who we are, mm-hmm. because we know who we are. Mm-hmm but about who he is. Steve, it'll make you run to him. Yeah. Well, and, and I like to say it this way, you know, while we were doing our worst, Christ was given his best. Yes. And, and I want you to qualify this on a human level, which kind of just in a small way puts it in perspective. Um, if you've been married and you love your spouse, uh, you know, loving them when they're loving you, it's, it's not too difficult when they're doing good things for you. When they've really made you mad, I mean, really made you mad, how hard is it to love them when they've really made you mad? It, I remember a pastor talking about him and his wife having this big argument, this big fight, and they're really going at each other. And the wife came back in with a bowl. She began to wash his feet. 
And he said it just melted him. He just thought, sure. here she is showing this act of love and service. And and so, you know, again, you did have the wrath. You did have the anger of God towards sin, mm-hmm. okay, that was poured out on Jesus. Sure. But, again, God was able, even in that anger and wrath that we should have got, sure, to demonstrate love through his son and the sacrifice. Absolutely. And. That is the thing, Glenn, as you're saying that again, we were doing the worst thing and God would given us at the worst point, at our worst point, yes. loving us when we clearly didn't deserve it. Clearly. Yes, absolutely. Well, this evening we've had so much to say and I, and I just, mm-hmm. I feel like we could, we could continue. Um, however, we do have a format that uh, to some degree that we need to adhere to. So uh, this evening, uh, Steve, it's just been amazing uh, uh, sharing the Word of God uh, during this uh, podcast ministry. And, and Pastor Fred, thank you so much for providing a uh, format for us and the opportunity for us you know, to sit here tonight and, and share God's Word uh, mm-hmm. with an audience that the, you know, I think goes really around the world. But, mm-hmm. but if you've heard us tonight, uh, and you've heard this word, and 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 God has um, spoken to your hearts, touching y- your heart and your life. Then then we we want to give you an opportunity uh, here this evening to um, to respond to the word that that you've heard. But if this is you this evening, or if you are one that's heard this word and you need uh, someone to pray with you. Uh, this evening, that we just want to let you know that uh, on your screen there's a phone number that you can call uh, uh, for prayer, for uh, counsel, for some ministry uh, that you may need. And there's people who speak in Spanish and English uh, if you uh, have those needs. So you can take advantage of that this evening, uh, a uh, amenity that's offered through this through this ministry. But uh, we just want to offer an opportunity tonight for those who who want to receive Christ. Uh, to to be able to do that and um, Pastor Steve, I don't know. Uh, I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot, but I think it would be amazing uh, for you to to lead us in a prayer tonight where we could do that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, if if you're like we said earlier tonight, you come that poor in spirit, uh, and there's that emptiness in you, and we're talking about God's love, and we're talking about God, and and maybe you can't relate to that. And you know, I want to say maybe you've been in church. It's, it's very common that people attend church all the time, and they've mm-hmm. never, never made a decision sure. for Christ. They've never surrendered their life. And attending church is not salvation. It's not sure. becoming a Christian. But tonight I'm going to lead you in prayer that you just, the Holy Spirit's kind of touched your heart, and you said, I want to know that love. Yes. I want to know that relationship with God. I want to be reunited with what God intended you to have, a relationship with God. So if that's sure. you tonight, yes. uh, I just want you to, to bow your head and close your eyes, and I want to lead you in a prayer, and I just yeah. want you to repeat these words after me tonight. I just want you to say, Jesus, Jesus, I come to you tonight. I come to you tonight. Acknowledging, acknowledging my need for you. My need for you. And I admit, I admit that I'm a sinner. That I'm a sinner. And I repent. And I repent from mm-hmm. a sinful life. A sinful life. And I turn to you. I turn to you, Lord. I receive your love. I receive your I receive your forgiveness, receive your forgiveness. And, I receive salvation. and I receive salvation, and I choose to follow you, to follow you. All, the days of my life. all the days of my life. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Fill, me, fill me, empower me, empower me. To, walk with you. to walk with you. I receive now, I receive now. By, faith, by faith the salvation, the salvation. And, my relationship and my relationship with you. With you. In, Jesus' name. In, Jesus name. In Jesus' name. You know, Glenn, tonight, if, if that's you, we believe if you prayed that prayer you know, the Bible says if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that Christ was raised from the dead, we will be saved. Mm-hmm. And so tonight, if you've prayed that prayer and you confess Jesus is Lord and you believe that he was raised from the dead, we sure. believe that you've uh, come into the kingdom. The Bible says that heaven rejoices uh, when a sinner repents. And so sure. that's part of the process. But Glenn, I want you to close out, if you would, to those who are believers. And we've talked about God's love and speak to them just for a moment. Sure. I, I know we're closing out, but... Hey, it's very easy uh, for me um, uh, along these lines that we've kind of shared tonight. Um, and uh, wow, what an amazing father we have. Mm-hmm. Um, he doesn't want us our performance, Steve. Um, yeah. he, he Does he want our obedience in, in our life? What, well, well, yes, he, he wants us to obey. He's the Lord, mm-hmm. uh, but he's very gracious. Yeah. He's very forgiving. Uh, yeah. he, he's very kind. He's gentle. Uh, he he um, he is just this amazing God 
uh, that um, knows our weaknesses. He, he knows mm-hmm. our thoughts that we wish that he didn't see, that we thought those thoughts. He knows about them. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, and, and still his warm, loving, constant embrace by the Holy Ghost is with us. I just want to encourage you, if you're struggling in your relationship with Jesus, uh, get, uh, folks, let's get our eyes off of ourselves. Yeah. How am I doing for Jesus? Yeah. And let's set our eyes on, on the Christ who did all the performing. Yeah. Let, let's set our eyes on the Father who paid the admission that Jesus was talking, uh, that mm-hmm. Jesus, mm-hmm. Steve, your mm-hmm. name is Steve, not yeah, Jesus, yes, right? Yes, yes. But you don't mind me and call Jesus. <laughs> no. oh. that, that, that God paid. He paid the Amen. admission. Yeah. Now we have to receive it by faith, but he paid the admission. Amen. So go in, yes, go into this, walk, get in there, get on the rides, yeah. Yeah. play the games, yeah. do what you got to do. Yeah. Uh, he's a great God. And he's committed to the journey, Steve. Mm-hmm. He's committed to the journey with us yeah. uh, as we walk with him through the years and decades that he's not expecting uh, us to be perfected overnight. He's committed to walk with us w- with all of our f- uh, faults, with uh, all of our, the, the junk and the rust on us. He's committed. He loves us. Mm-hmm. And he's good. He's 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 more gooder than you can ever imagine, <laughs> uh, and he's worth running to. So run to him, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Guys, thanks for joining us here tonight, Glenn. I think it's safe to say that I've loved having this time I, together tonight. I have loved. So we hope you loved it too. So uh, walk in love. Good night. Good night. If you enjoyed the show today, be sure and get the download and the uh, show notes that we have available for you. If you agree that this is the place to be, invite your friends. Use those little buttons to uh, connect us to your Facebook friends and others. And if you have not subscribed, do it today. Check out our free downloads. This is the Fred Hughes Show signing off.